Well, we often hear of oil fields and people asking us about, well, what happens with oil fields that are in fractured basement, in granites and other igneous rocks? Well, perhaps one of the best known and one of the most successful is the backhoe oil field in Vietnam, the subject of today's video. Now, backhoe translates as white tiger. And here is the location of the backhoe field. So here's uh, southern Vietnam. You can see on this little inset map the area that the map covers. Here's the coast of Vietnam. Here's uh, Vung Tau. Ho Chi Minh City is, is just up the Mekong from here. And then you can see out into this basin. This is the Vietsov's Petro Block 091. And uh, here is the backhoe field. And you can see that there has been a lot of discoveries within this area, but Baco was uh, certainly one of the bigger fields in the region, kind of kicked things off. Now here is the tectonic setting, so it's a, a generalised map of the Cenozoic basins. And here's the Kulong Basin, a very, very prolific basin just off Phong Tau. And this is the location for all the oil fields we saw on the first map. Now you can see here's a major spreading centre in the South China Sea. Tectonically, very active, also very, very young. I mean, lots and lots of tertiary sediments and tertiary basins. Really fascinating area. The backhoe operator we've mentioned, discovered in 1975 by a mobile. First oil, 1986, um, it produced over a quarter of a million barrels of oil per day back in 2021. And uh, it's been exporting gas since 1995 via the um, 107 kilometre long 16 inch diameter pipeline. Now, the hub development, well, the wrong field was added in uh, 1994, although it's had a, a bunch of uh, production problems uh, since coming on stream. And then there's the Doi Moi uh, field uh, subsequently added. Now, ultimate recoverable reserves for backhoe, estimated to be in the range. Uh, 1 billion to 1.4 billion barrels of oil. It's a good quality, 34 API oil, and there's over 20 producers on the field. It's Vietnam's largest single producing oil field. So what of the geology? Well, this is a sort of a, a buried hill uh, type play. It's a horse with over a thousand meters of relief and indeed oil column. It's a highly fractured granite basement. It's the Kulong Basin, Cenozoic rifting, Oligocene to early Miocene basin. The, the basement itself consists of uh, Jurassic to late Cretaceous granite to granodiorite. Uh, some question as to some of the uh, granites could be even as old as Precambrian. So um, I'm not entirely sure what we're up to on that debate. But moving on, surrounded by uh, Eocene to late Oligocene lacustrine shale source rocks. So they have actually uh, been matured, they've generated oil which has migrated into uh, fracture systems within the, the granitic uh, basement. And um, there has been some minor contribution from the sort of fringing granite wash, so uh, basically weathered granite or some very immature sands that uh, have been eroded from this granite high. Probably uh, very important as a, a migration enabler. So here's a cross section from southwest to northeast from the backhoe field over towards the, the Rangdong field. Now, uh, the geology here doesn't seem to have been a, a lot of structuration post Oligocene times, but you can see uh, by the uh, basement times there's been lots of structuration, uh, lots of faulting, lots of folding as well. Uh, now, it must be pretty tough to actually pick this, uh, this top basement, but uh, it will be helped with, of course, uh, well control, but that's uh, not an interpretation I would be able to make. Looking just on, on one line, which is kind of the limit of my uh, geophysical skills, if it were known. So uh, here is the big high here. This is backhoe. And uh, here we're getting the charging from these Oligocene-type uh, lacustrine source rocks, uh, juxtaposed and, and uh, feeding oil into uh, backhoe. And on the other side here, we see the same for the Wangdong. Basin stratigraphy here, well, I think we've kind of covered all this. Pause the video and have a look. Here is the backhoe formation in here, but obviously it's not the reservoir for the backhoe field, which is down here in these granites and uh, described here as being late Mesozoic on this particular section. So 
There are younger reservoirs, but they're not significant in backhoe. So here's a look at the high, and here is the backhoe discovery. So very complex area. This is an ISA depth, so these are in kilometres, so you can see six kilometres here, uh, seven kilometres. Again, we're seeing the same thing on this section. So some of these intrabasin highs, some of these granites, they've been so faulted and they'll be fractured as well. So this is set up as the reservoir. And these are these early tertiary lacustrine shales that have matured given the depth of burial and they charge the fractures in the granites. Reservoir characteristics, well, you can see they talk of porosity of 3 to 5%, occasionally up to 20% porosity. Now that does sound quite high, but there's a lot of production data that would support the reserves estimates. Again, in detail, it looks like there's some thrusting been going on in here, some very complicated geology in this early section, and indeed uh, showing some faults in the overburden. So there are some younger, younger structures, but not really significant offset or structuration. So if we have a look uh, here at the logs for the reservoir section within the backhoe field, and this is the BH12 well, this is the caliper here, and the caliper uh, is said to be one of the best indicators of the high quality reservoir. And, and this must be uh, cavings and over gauged hole you can uh, we see in this zone here. But occasionally uh, we see fractures on the log. This is the gamma ray, which is generally very high, and of course granites will have lots of uh, potassium and other radioactive minerals in them. Here's the latch log deep, so the resistivity tool here. We've got density neutron. We've got various uh, sonic uh, logs in here, and this is a total porosity. This is presumably a, a calculated column here. The FMI log, and then uh, an interpretation. And what we see on here is presumably some kind of a PLT. Now, there are some zones that are flowing down here, but it really at this point here, which seems to coincide with, with some kind of a, a major zone of fracturing right at the base of this unit here and that's when we get the start of the oil flow and as we move up we get more and more uh, coming in so there does seem to be a, a reasonably good correlation with some of the more porous zones which are probably the highly fractured zones and some of those have indeed caved. So here's a depth map essentially uh, showing just the faulting and the fractures uh, that have been identified within the field. Certainly the shallowest zone, the, uh, the central zone, uh, we see up to 2,000 metres of reverse throw on, on the fault here, on this major reverse fault. This is the zone that has the most fracturation. It's the highest zone. It's the one uh, where we get the most production. There's the BH12 well. We just have a look at the log for that. The northern zone and the southern zone, not quite as prolific. They don't have the same intensity of deformation. Here is a, a reservoir model showing again, here's the high, here's this reverse fault in here. Presumably these are the Oligocene and Eocene lacustrine shales that are the source rock charging into these fractures, filling up to the top of it. So there's this uh, what's called a weathered rind. So we do have perhaps granite wash or whatever you know, sort of eroded or weathered granite here from perhaps a severial exposure. But there's the, the granite and here's all the, uh, the fractures and joint systems we can see. And certainly there seems to be the highest concentration of deformation towards the crest of the uh, structure, less so as we go down deeper. But pause the video and I may have missed one or two of the key features in here, but Certainly, it's been helped by this reverse fault actually causing lots of deformation. Now, oil production, well, you can see here the contribution that backhoe makes compared with other fields in the region. And this is the oil production from two sources. One comes from Petra Vietnam, and it's actually got some projections for the future. Presumably, it was done some time ago. But this is the uh, EIA data, and there's a relatively good correlation between the two. Some minor differences. This is for the totality of Vietnam, presumably. But you can see the contribution that backhoe has made through time 
So it came on stream here in around about the, the mid-80s. It reached a peak here uh, around about 2000, about a quarter of a million barrels a day, so a really fantastic field. And then it's gone into a, a steep decline and now a, a more, more gentle decline. And I think this is an extrapolation into the future here. So we've seen the best of Baco, but there's still a long tail to be expected for the production of this field. Now, if we look at our Trove entry, if you subscribe to Trove, this is what we have in for backhoe. Lots and lots of write-ups, information. You'll see some of the slides that we've used to put this presentation together. Give us a ring and we'll set up a demonstration. But more importantly, imagine having this for worldwide. What a great view you would have of all the oil fields, gas fields and discoveries on the planet. Thanks for watching. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. You know the story. Send us an email if uh, you've got any thoughts for future videos. And uh, remember, there's the website. Hope to see you back on the channel before too long. Bye for now.